Okay, I'm running VirtualBox here, and this is the um, Fedora installer happening right in a window inside my Windows operating system by running VirtualBox. Here's VirtualBox running behind. You can see here Fedora 12, it says it's running. It gives me, a, uh, these are the settings for this virtual computer that I'm running. And then this is my window that shows the virtual computer. And I'm just going to capture my mouse here and go through the installation procedure. So now my mouse is captured. I'll hit Next. And this just walk you through the installation of Fedora. I'm going to choose English, uh, US English for the keyboard. And when you get this message, warning, error processing the drive, I'm just going to reinitialize the drive. Okay, I'm going to accept the default for the host name, just localhost, local domain. Okay. I will pick my location. Let's say Mountain Time. Okay, and then this is important. This is your root password for your system. Every um, Linux system has a root account, which is also in the Windows world would be the administrator account. This is the root account. So I'll give it a password here. It's going to be, it's going to warn me that the password is probably too weak, but I'll use it anyway. Um, and it's going to say, in, in this next screen, it says that we need to um, partition the hard drive. I'm going to just replace existing Linux system. I'm going to choose that. If you wanted to do some advanced storage configuration, you could change the partition layout. Um, you could, uh, well, I'm sorry, not with the advanced storage configuration. That's something different. You could check mark this down here and review and modify the partitioning layout if you wanted to. We'll just check it to check it out. Hit Next. And you can see here that um, this is the partitioning layout. We've got uh, SDA1 uh, is the um, boot partition. All right, so this is a SATA drive. And um, uh, the boot partition has EXT4 file system on it. And the size is 200 megabytes. This is the boot partition. In SDA2, we've got an 8 gigabyte um, partition. And um, this is going to be our um, main partition for our hard disk where basically all the files will go in the system. All right, so two partitions, the boot partition and then the, um, the majority of the physical volume. And I'll hit Next. All right. OK, and I'll hit Format. And then Write Changes to Disk. And then it'll go through the procedure of creating the file system. All right, this might take a few minutes. This might take a few minutes, so what I'm going to do is come back and finish the rest of the installation in the next video. Oh, no, we're back. Never mind. We're good. Install bootloader on dev SDA. Perfect. Okay. I'm not going to use a bootloader password. All right. The bootloader will probably be the default, which is grub. All right. And then um, since we're right here, we'll just finish this. Um, I'm going to uh, install s web server and office and productivity suites. And I'm going to customize my installation right now. So I'm going to click on Customize Now, hit Next. And I'm going to install the KDE desktop environment as well as the GNOME desktop environment. Um, applications. I'm going to include some authoring programs in, in my installation. Servers. I'm going to have a DNS server, directory server, network servers, server configuration tools, and a Windows file server. Now you can also click on some of these, like these server configuration tools, and if there's some packages that weren't installed, like these network servers, right, it says optional packages selected one of two. If you click on optional packages, you can say, yes, I want to have this extra package or not. Okay. 
MySQL database. Uh, sure, why not? Click on that. Um, base system, administrative tools. I'm going to add some system tools here. Okay. And and development. See if there's, um, if I'm a programmer, then I'm going to be interested in if I want to develop for Fedora, if I want to develop, um, if I'll need uh, programming software, like if I want to be a develop for the GNOME um, operating system, I could do that right here. All right, click Next. And it's going to check on the dependencies for the packages I've selected. If there's some packages that I didn't select that I need to select, it will make those recommendations for me.